Now, some in my audience will be saying, fine, John, that's all well and good, but carbon-14 proves that everything is really, really old. Carbon-14 is made in that a cosmic ray hits nitrogen-14 and changes into carbon-14. This is actually correct. Carbon-14 and nitrogen-14 are almost exactly the same, except that carbon-14 has one of the protons replaced with a neutron. So when cosmic rays enter the atmosphere, they produce neutrons. One of the neutrons bumps one of the protons out of the nitrogen-14, replacing the proton, and it becomes carbon-14. It's unstable and gives off an emission that eventually reverts back to nitrogen-14. Now, all living things are made up of carbon, and some is carbon-14. While these things are living, there's a balance. But when there's death, there's a loss of carbon-14. The idea is if we could find out how much carbon-14 is left in something, we could know how long it's been dead. That's what the theory proposes. Now, they suppose lots of things, one of which, for example, is how much carbon-14 was there 2,000 years ago? We don't know. We weren't there. This is why radiocarbon dating results need to be calibrated against calibration curves. And these calibration curves are derived from comparison of the radiocarbon dating results with other methods of dating, such as dendrochronology, uh, cave formations, coral samples, and sedimentary formation. Each of these different dating methods independently confirms the amount of carbon-14 that was in the atmosphere at the time that's being analyzed. Analyzed. And so using that information, we can adjust the results of our carbon-14 dating to account for the amount of carbon-14 that was in the atmosphere at the time. What we do know is things that we know their age, carbon-14 fails to give the right age. They certainly do if the results aren't calibrated to suit the environment the specimen was found in. For example, there was a seal that had been dead for 30 years when its carcass was tested with carbon-14 gave an age of death of 4,600 years. Talk Origins has a write-up on this and they can probably explain it better than I can in, in less time, so let me just read directly off their website. This is a well-known reservoir effect that occurs also with mollusks and other animals that live in the water. It happens when old carbon is introduced into the water. In the above case of the seal, old carbon dioxide is present within deep ocean bottom water that has been circulating through the oceans for thousands of years before up along the Antarctic coast. And you can read through the rest of the summary yourself if you want to. But in short, it just means that it's a limitation of the tool. Things that live at the bottom of the ocean or things that regularly eat things that live at the bottom of the ocean can't be properly dated using carbon-14 dating because not enough carbon-14 gets from the atmosphere to the ocean bottom. Keep in mind that carbon-14 uh, originates with plants during photosynthesis. So any carbon-14 that's going to be found at the ocean bottom is going to originate from plants and then it gets eaten by by other animals, they get eaten by other animals, they get eaten by other animals, gets passed into the ocean food chain, and carbon-14 is not being re-injected into that ocean bottom food chain. Bark from a living tree gave an age of 10,000 years. It was alive. It took me a while to find this claim, but eventually I found it all over the place. Uh, I found it at one website, and I searched for the article's name, and found it on all sorts of other creationist websites. Here's what they say. A few examples include a living tree growing next to an airport dated as being 10,000 years old. In an article by Bruno Huber, recording gaseous exchange under fuel conditions. This is an article in the Physiology of Forest Trees from 1958. Now, despite this appearing on any number of creation websites, there are tons of them, pages of them, uh, I couldn't find anything about the original article. So eventually, I just ended up searching for Bruno Huber. It turns out that the only one that I could find was in a brief Wikipedia article. It says that he was a Swiss astrologer, astrologer, mind you, who lived from November 29th, 1930 to November 3rd, 1999, founded the Huber School of Astrology in 1962, which specializes in astrological psychology, and it has a link to a website. And the page is La Psychologie Astrologique La Méthode d'Hubert. And this is Astrological Psychology, the Huber Method, the Uber Method. And as you can obviously tell, the page is all in French. So what did I do? Well, I took Physiology of Forest Trees, plugged it into Google Translate, Physiologie des Arbres Forestiers. Goxter, buddy, you gotta help me with my French accent. But I plugged that into Google, and what did I find? Well, I found a citation of the Physiology of Forest Trees, a symposium. Ronald Press, New York, 1958, $12. Okay. Well, it turns out that this is not a journal, it's just a book. So, now I know the actual source. Where can I find the actual source? Because obviously, these are creationist websites. They don't show you the context of the quote. They take the quote that they want, they copy and paste it from each other. Nobody knows where it actually came from, nobody knows the actual context. It's sort of like 
the Darwin quote about the eye, where Darwin says that the idea of the eye being formed by natural selection is absurd in the highest degree, but of course he goes on to explain it in excruciating detail. Anyway, I wasn't able to find a copy of this book online to find the context, but I did manage to find a copy from a bookseller, so I will be getting a copy of this soon and I'll be able to find what the complete and full context of this quote is, and see if the creationists are just full of it, or if their copy-pasted quote mine is actually accurate. The shell from living snails gave an age of 27,000 years. The dating of the living snail shells is another example of the reservoir effect, which is the same effect that we saw in the seal specimen. A link to the Talk Origins write-up is provided. I won't bother reading this one. From the other extreme, we have coal from Russia that's supposedly 300 million years old gave an age of 1,680 years. According to Wikipedia, and I'll read directly from the article, this may indicate possible contamination by small amounts of bacteria, underground sources of radiation causing the nitrogen-14 to carbon-14 reaction, direct uranium decay, or other unknown secondary sources of carbon-14 production. Carbon-14 is not reliable for dating things that used to live. A hammer is not reliable when used as a dinner plate. On the other extreme, we have a process for dating rocks. This is called uh, potassium argon. In 1801, a volcano in Hawaii made it had an eruption, and the lava flowed and touched the water, stayed in the, there, solid there. They took those samples 167 years later to see how long it had been since the volcano erupted. We already know, 167 years. But with potassium argon, we got dates between 100 million years to 3 billion years ago that it erupted. We go to Talk Origins again. It was not the lava that was dated, but inclusions of olivine, called xenoliths, present within the lava. These gave anomalously old age because they contained excess argon that the enclosing lava did not. John makes another claim here, uh, but I think it's covered by the same write-up, so I would recommend that you read the full write-up. And I'm gonna skip his other claim because you can read it at Talk Origins. And so as I mentioned, for things that we do know, we find that that also is unreliable. When used inappropriately. Some say, well, you need a long period of time to make fossils. Well, there's lots of fossils out there. Here's one of my favorite ones. This is a cowboy boot. This leather boot claim is interesting. Uh, I found this webpage that basically debunks it. For one thing, it shows close-up pictures of the boot in question, which shows completely unaltered leather. You know, it's worn from being in the creek bed, but other than that, there's no fossilization evident whatsoever. So while it's supposed to be the leg that's supposedly inside the boot that's fossilized, why would the boot not be fossilized too? It was under the same conditions, supposedly. So what it actually appears to be is just that sediment, like mud, got into the the boot, dry it out, made a cast of the leg, and as the leg rotted away it filled in more space. This water wheel uh, of wood had water flowing over it. In a matter of 60 years the wood became petrified wood. It became rock. Notice that the wood has not been turned to stone, but that lime has formed a stone layer around the wood. That's very different from petrification. This bottle encased in rock with a ceramic jar on the left-hand side, was 130 years in the bottom of the ocean in a ship that had crashed and wrecked off the coast of Australia. And yet, because of natural elements there, rock had actually formed around the ceramic jar and the bottle. Again, this is the same situation as the water wheel. This isn't that remarkable. A miner dropped his hat by accident into a water hole inside of a mine. He couldn't fish it out. Somebody fished it out 50 years later. It had been turned into a fossilized hat, as hard as a helmet that a motorcyclist would wear. 50 years, fossilized hat. Here's a picture of the hat. Notice that it has calcified, not fossilized, or petrified. This is the same thing that happens in your water tap, when you see the white, crusty stuff underneath your water tap. It happens very, very quickly when it's in water. Notice that John even says that it was dropped originally into a water hole and fished out, a prime location for calcification to occur. These pliers were found on the edge of of a beach thoroughly encrusted with built up of sand and rock all fossilized around these pliers. Even a piece of shell is still seen here. 
For one thing, pliers wouldn't fossilize. Fossilization is life that's been preserved in rocks. That is, bones and other artifacts of life that have been replaced by minerals. Besides that, these don't even really look like pliers. They look more like this, which could be a piece of silicified mollusk shell. And apparently this one crappy black and white picture is the only image that exists of these supposed pliers. They found this bowler cap. Calcified bowler cap. Come on, John. Now, if you'd like to have a novelty for a snack, how about a petrified ham sandwich? Here's the petrified ham turned to rock, again, in a very short period of time, not millions of years. And also there's a bag of wheat flour turned to rock also. Even the stitching could still be seen on the bag, but fossilized in a very short period of time. Again, both the ham sandwich and the wheat flour are covered by the situations that I've talked about previously. In fact, these are even more covered by those situations because sediment or calcium could get much more easily in the pores of these substances.